future. In this particular book, we have got uh, 11 chapters, and uh, this particular book is basically about how do we do general setup related to accounts, like journal ledger setup, your chart of account setup, how do we set up main accounts, how do we configure our accounting structure, then how do we set up our different kinds of currencies, like we have got accounting currency, uh, triangulation currency, reporting currency, all these currencies, what are the significance of these currencies in AX, how do we set up them, and uh, <clears throat> then we have got how do we set up the journal the form wherein we post transaction, how do we set up that journal form, how do we actually go ahead and post transactions into journal, What, how we can check the vouchers for those particular transactions, then we'll see how do we set up sales tax in this particular work, how do we set up sales tax, what are the basic setups, and how system calculates sales tax for a particular transaction. After that, we will also see in this book, we have got cash in bank management module, wherein it is basically focused on checks. How do we generate checks? How do we set up checks? How do we set up a check layout? How do we actually <clears throat> um, make payments through check? All these things we will see in this particular chapter. How do we make reversal of check? How do we actually uh, uh, avoid a check? There are different things which we will study in each chapter. Then in this book, we have customer setup and vendor setup. The setup part is exactly same in customer. However, for each uh, module, accounts payable and accounts receivable, we have got daily procedures which are different. So we will study how do we make uh, invoice posting for a customer and for a vendor. How do we actually make prepayment setup for a purchase order? How do we generate a prepayment invoice? What's the complete process flow for prepayment? And all these things. And in accounts receivable, we have got how do we actually post a free text invoice? How do we actually uh, record a customer payment? How do we actually reimburse a customer if we receive an overpayment? All these things we will study in this book. Now, since you have asked me to actually discuss about one particular chapter. So I'm going to discuss about this chapter, which is the very first chapter, in which we have got first thing, journal ledger setup. And this first thing is currencies and exchange rate. In AX, we have got three kinds of currencies, basically three types of currencies. First is accounting currency, which is like, let's say your legal entity is in India. You will do all your accounting all your uh, transactions in uh, Indian currency, which is INR. So in that case, your accounting currency becomes INR. However, if you want that you have got several companies, like one in India, one in G uh, Great Britain, one in US, and you want that your corporate office is in US and you want all your reporting to be done in USD, in that case, you can choose your reporting currency as your US currency, which is USD. <coughs> Sorry. Now, if you have got, uh, if you're uh, got customers and uh, vendors all over the world, and in that case, you might want that uh, some currencies are not globally accepted. Like uh, if I talk about NOC, and okay, that is NOC, Norway currency. It is not globally accepted. The way INR is not globally accepted. So in that case, you will need a kind of currency which is globally accepted to convert INR into NOC and NOC into INR because there's no direct exchange rate between these two currencies. So the third type of currency is triangulation currency which helps you in order to convert your currencies which are not globally accepted into, I mean, in order to provide you the exchange rate, it helps you to convert one currency into another which are not globally converted or globally accepted, I apologize. So in that case, you will have to set up one currency in each of your legal entity as your triangulation currency so that it can convert your, uh, those currencies which are not globally accepted with the help of the respective exchange rate with the global, uh, globally accepted currency like Euro can be one of your uh, triangulation currency 
or GBP or USD or any of the currency which is globally accepted. After that, once you have set up these three types of currencies, you will have to set up your fiscal year. Fiscal year is basically that year in which you are going to perform your accounting and in which year, I mean, like if you are uh, legal entities in India, you will report your tax as per Indian uh, financial calendar, which is 1st April to 31st March. So in that case, you will set up your fiscal calendar from 1st April to 31st March, and that will be called your fiscal year, in which you will be doing all your accounting transactions. So <clears throat> in fiscal year, you will have to set up, first of all, what kind of uh, uh, periods you want. You want 12 periods in your fiscal year, you want one period in your fiscal year, so you will have to set the unit. It could be monthly, it could be yearly. So basis on that unit, your fiscal year will be designed by AX. Let me just show you in my machine. So let's say you want to create a fiscal year. So how would you create it? You'll go into fiscal calendars, and there you will just uh, let's say I'm creating one. You just give it the start date and the end date. Then you will give it a name. Then in the length of the period, you will define the length of the period. Like I am saying one month. And create. Going to test. You can see system has created 12 periods for each month. Whenever system creates a calendar, it will have 13 periods. First will be your opening period, which will have, uh, which will be the first day of the year. Last one will be the closing period, last day of the year. Then rest of them are operating periods wherein you post the transactions. The way you have defined one month, each month will be your operating period. If you want to assign this particular fiscal calendar, You will have to go into ledger and you can assign this particular calendar into your legal entity. The way I have fiscal here right now, I can attach test as well. But the reason I don't want to attach it right now because even if I want to change it, I can change it. But I will have to recalculate the ledger periods. The moment you recalculate the ledger periods, it's run a bad job and it takes time. So this is how you assign it, and uh, then <clears throat> we come back on PBT. Then we have got date intervals. Date intervals are basically variants for creating a period irrespect which will work irrespective of your fiscal year. Let's say you want to fetch out the report for each quarter. So what you would do, you will provide a from date and a to date for that quarter, right? But <clears throat> sometimes, Co companies want that they can create a variant. In that case, they don't have to provide a date. Date will be figured out by the system automatically the moment you provide a variant based on the fiscal year of that particular year. So how do we create such kind of uh, variants? Let me show you. You go into AX, go into periods, And in periods, you just click on date intervals. In date intervals, let's say I want to create quarter one. I will say my fiscal year start. See the date here? It takes the start date of the fiscal year. Now I say end should be fiscal year end minus nine months. That means it is going to calculate first, if I remove this nine, if you see here, it's 31st March 2015. Okay, oh, just a minute. 31st December 2015. Now, the moment I do minus nine, it takes you to the end of the first quarter. So either way, it 
it depends on the person how they are creating the period because you have got several parameter based on that you can create a variant so this is how you can create a variant and it really helps when you are doing reporting you don't have to provide the start and the end date because these variants work irrespective of year in every fiscal year you can use these variants after that <coughs> you have got uh, you have got reason codes reason codes are basically used for reporting and auditing purposes so let's say you're posting a transaction and uh, you want to give it a reason why you're posting it so in that case you will have to create a reason code and attach it to that transaction let me just show you for ledger reasons you go here and in ledger reasons you can just create n number of reasons whatever you want right here we have journal adjustment collection of data entry error payment lost in mail whatever it is make sure you check it so that it is visible in the drop down when you're posting a transaction so let's say you are posting a transaction and uh, here it is so let's say I'm putting putting some transaction into the system now I want to give it a reason code so here in journal uh, tab you will see this reason code option and whatever reasons I've enabled over there you will see all those reasons over here as well. so you can choose it and the moment you're fetching report you can fetch a report based on these reason codes let's say I want to see all those transactions which are uh, related to correction of data entry error so you can just select it and based on this system will fetch out all the transactions in front of you uh, which has got these recent codes then uh, we have got uh, allocation rules so allocation rules are basically used when you want to allocate your funds into or account balances into different financial dimensions so we have got four kinds of method to do it. First one is basis. Basis means you want to allocate the balances basis on some account balance. Let me take you an example here. Let's say you want to distribute the selling expense of four business units basis on the sale they have done. So in that case, you can use this method which will actually allocate the selling expense into different business units basis on the sale they have done. However, if you want to use different methods, in that case you don't have to uh, take anything as a base because this is the only method wherein you have to set up the basis. Other methods are like that. You will provide, uh, the second one is fixed percentage. In that you will basically provide the percentage and you will just that that percentage will not be uh, uh, depending on any particular account let's say you want to um, distribute again selling expense into your different uh, or you will just provide the percentage and in that case system will allocate uh, the balance for an expense account into that same respective percentage which you have defined in this method then you have got ratio Fixed ratio is quite same, exactly like fixed percentage. However, in that you provide ratio. Ratio could be used like, let me give you an example, a very good example. Let's say, uh, 
let's say you uh, want to give a bonus to your employees, okay? And you figure out you want to give 100,000 as your bonus. And uh, the if you want to give that bonus based on the employees ratio in each business unit. So in that case, you will you can provide employees, uh, I mean, number of employees as ratio in that method. So that system will distribute 100,000 in each business unit based on the employees they have. This is a very good example for a ratio. However, still system will not figure out on its own how many employees they have. You'll have to give the ratio manually in the method itself. Then final one is spread even. Spread even means it will distribute the amount equally among your financial dimensions. There is nothing predefined in it. it the moment you choose that, you will uh, your all funds will be distributed equally among your financial dimensions. 